Hey everyone, I was just sent this three pound tumbler from Vivor. I think that's how you pronounce it, I'm not sure. I had never heard of it, but someone had contacted me and asked me if I wanted to try it out, so I said sure. So anyway, I just unboxed it. It came in this nice um, protective styrofoam and it's a three pound barrel, which has the uh, screw top it has. So all tumblers have two tops. There's um, the outer one, that's usually made of some kind of metal, which is what this is. And then there's the inner one that actually slips in and that helps prevent any leakage of the you know, water that you have in there. And you always need um, like a knife like this or a screwdriver to pop this out because it is in there nice and tight and it's meant to be in there nice and tight so that you don't have, you don't have any uh, leakage. And so um, this is what the inside of a three pound tumbler looks like. We've been talking a lot about tumblers on Facebook and my, my very first tumbler was a one pound tumbler and this is it. And look at the difference in size. And I always tell people for a starter tumbler, you need to get a three pound. You will not be happy with the one pound barrel. So this is a great starter tumbler size, um, three pounds. So um, it came with some stuff. So as we know, these tumblers are all called rock tumblers and it confuses people who are just starting out with glass because they think, well, why would I use a rock tumbler? Well, we use rock tumblers to tumble glass. And um, it did come with a bunch of grit. Now this is great for the rocks. Um, it has different grit sizes and the different steps, one, two, and three, but the, um, the grit, the lowest number grid is 320, and for tumbling uh, glass, we use lower numbers. We use like uh, 70 to 90 for the faux, um, the faux sea glass. So, um, and we know the lower the number, the coarser the grit, the faster it um, it smooths it out. So this would be more for rocks. And this is kind of cool because it does come, for those of you who are interested in it for tumbling rocks, your kids might like this. It comes with, um, whoa, eight, one, two, three, four, five, 10, 20 rocks to tumble and all the grit for it. And um, it comes with a little strainer and I think it even comes with something. It looks like you can make a little necklace or something out of it. Your kids might like that while you're tumbling your glass. So um, anyway, and then um, the glass that you just saw me breaking up over there, we are going to put in this and tumble. So when I first started tumbling glass, I was doing it to make faux sea glass. I would use a very coarse grit. I mean, I still do that, but I would use a very coarse grit and um, tumble it for up to a week, which at another time we're going to do that. Um, today, we are going to be tumbling it for one to two hours. And um, once I got into glass, I started liking the broken glass art also. But with broken glass art, it's sharp and you can cut yourself. So I started tumbling it and I was tumbling it with grit. And after listening to a lot of people talk about it, they're only tumbling it for one to two hours and most with just water, which I think, wow, that's great. And that takes the sharp edges off and you can make the same beautiful uh, glass art and it's not sharp, you don't cut yourself. So um, anyway, this uh, seems to have uh, a bunch of different settings as far as speeds and you can set it for so many days, but we'll do that in a few minutes after we get our glass and water in there. So for this project, we're going to be using a clear textured vase. And I just want to show you with the nippers that you can control the way the glass flies. If you hold them like that, the glass will go down. If you hold it sideways, the glass will go sideways. And I am kind of holding it sideways a little bit just so that I can show you how I am cutting the glass. But I am angling it down a tiny bit so that it will fall down into the box. It's in your best interest to cut your glass in a deep box so that it doesn't fly all over. And of course, here I am doing it in the kitchen. You shouldn't be doing that. And all I'm doing is nipping all the way around the vase. And I just keep on going around in circles till either you have enough glass or you've used all the glass up. And I come back and I end up taping the bottom because, you know, sometimes the glass shards will slip under the um, little flaps in the box. 
and I'll just do this slowly so you can see what I'm doing and then I'll pull some of the glass pieces out so that you can see what the glass pieces look like or the what I'm trying to get out of the glass pieces um, when I cut it like this so I'm just going to do it slow for a minute so I just like I said I just continue to go around and around So you really need to be wearing safety glasses when you're cutting up glass like this because little shards can fly. A lot of people wear gloves. It's probably in your best interest to wear gloves. I can just, I just cannot work with them, but we're all adults and we all need to make decisions for ourselves. When I break or cut up glass, I do do it out in the garage and I do have a deep wooden box that I use um, and then any shards stay right in the bottom of the box so I don't have to worry about it but I was just afraid if I pick up this box some of the shards are going to fall out through the holes and that's why I taped this one up. So here I'm just pulling out some pieces that have turned out the way I want them to. Um, sometimes glass has a mind of its own and you can nip it whatever way you want and it doesn't always break the right way. But the majority of them have broke this way when you nip it in that manner. And they will kind of stand up on their own. One way um, they may stand up straighter than the other. But you see how they kind of stand on their own when you nip? So this is because it's a circular vase that they do this. Just like that. So next, I'm just taking some of the pieces that may have come out too big and making them smaller and finishing up the vase by just, like I said, continuing around in a circle and um, nipping away at it. And in the very end, um, I do nip up some of the pieces that didn't turn out quite right into real small pieces because we need pieces to fill in in the Christmas tree um, where it's kind of empty. So I always have some extra real teeny tiny pieces that I tumble along with the other ones so that I can use them as fill in pieces. And that's what I'm doing there. And then you can see the very bottom of the vase sitting there and we'll just keep that and use that for something else. So here I am just dumping the glass into the barrel and then I'm going to put water in it and you want to fill it with water just over the top of the glass. And remember we're not putting any grit or sand or anything in it. And then sorry this is off camera a little bit but I'm putting the inner top on which should be nice and snug and then the outer top on which has a little screw top that you put um, put on and again I'm sorry I have this kind of off the camera a little bit and then here's the actual tumbler I have it set on top of it and the left knob here controls the number of days so you can actually put it up to nine days nine days or less as many days as you want and then the right knob controls the speed and it has four different settings as far as the speed and you just push that button in to start it and then turn the knob to adjust the speed that you want it and it, like I said it goes up to number four and that's what we're going to leave it at and we're going to leave it on for one hour. So here we go, one hour later, I'm just taking the screw top off, the top top and the inner one, and dumping it out into the colander. And it is not, um, it is not sharp at all. It's, it's perfect. So, I mean, one hour. I guess if you have some real pointy ends, you might have to do it um, for two hours, but it is not sharp at all. And I am rinsing it off, even though I didn't put any grit in. I did wash the vase before I started cutting it up, but sometimes you might have some dirt or something that um, is still in the water from the vase if you didn't clean it properly. So then I dump it out onto a towel and I let it dry for a little while. It is not sharp at all and it's such a simple thing to do. Um, you know, just throw it in a tumbler for one hour and it takes all the sharp edges off and the threat of getting cut. And if you're selling your art, that's another thing. If you're selling your art, um, you know, you always have to leave a warning that you can cut yourself. Well, w this way you wouldn't have to do that. 
So next I spread it all out on a pan. Textured side is down because I am going to spray paint the inside. It would be the inside of the vase, the untextured side green. I'm going to be doing something a little bit different that I'm trying out. Um, the translucent spray paints, the green is kind of hard to get a hold of. So I'm going to try to use an opaque spray paint and do something a little bit different. And I'm just going to go ahead and, like I say, spray the inside or the untextured side of the vase with this opaque green spray paint. And now after about an hour, they're dry and I've flipped them all over the other way and I've taken some gold spray paint and sprayed it on. And then I have a bottle of vinegar and water and after I've sprayed the gold on, I am spraying some vinegar and water, half and half solution, and dabbing it with the paper towel just to remove some of the gold. I want um, you to be able to see the green through the gold. And I'm just working in one area at a time, a little bit at a time. The reason I did not spray the green on the same side as I sprayed the gold is because then when I put the vinegar and oil on it would take the green paint off also and I did not want any of the green paint to come off and I just continued doing this until I've done all of the glass and honestly when I started this I was looking for more of a mercury glass look with gold but I didn't realize that the texture on it um, you really have to use flat glass so we're going to try that again with another video but um, I think you'll really like the way this turned out next I spray painted my frame gold and I'm starting to spray paint more of my frames now because I think it gives better coverage and it's easier to do than painting I really do not like to paint the paint was dry, I took Elmer's glue and put it around the perimeter of the back of the frame where the glass would sit. Then I replaced the glass and took Elmer's glue one more time and put it around the perimeter. Now this serves two purposes. It helps to hold the glass in place and it helps to prevent resin leaks when you put resin on the other side. So once you put the resin on the other side, that will permanently adhere it, the glass, to the frame when the resin is dry. So this glue needs to sit overnight and sometimes up to 24 hours depending on how much you put on. After the glue was dry I took painter's tape and put it around the perimeter of the back just as an extra precaution against resin leaks. And this is something that I oftentimes forget to do and then once I have the glass on it I try to figure out how to lift it up without dumping the glass and uh, putting it underneath. You can remember to do it right after the glue is dried. It's in your best interest. So next I started assembling the project and what I did was I tried to use the larger pieces toward the bottom and getting smaller and smaller as I went up and I kind of um, kept them further apart at the bottom and then as I got toward the top I put them closer and closer together until I got it as high as I wanted it. And then um, once I got it as high as I wanted it, then I started filling in the center. And then once I had the whole center filled in, I don't know if you remember how I was saying I was cutting up these pieces that didn't turn out just right, the little glass pieces into smaller pieces that I would also spray paint. Well, that's when I started filling in the empty spots. I would look for spots where you could see through to the glass and just kind of dropping those little pieces into all of those areas. So I did mess around with toppers and I finally decided on that star and the bottom I messed around with too and I finally ended up just putting some stained glass, cutting a piece of stained glass and using that for the tree trunk. Now that star was actually kind of a rustic rust colored star and I sprayed it with the gold spray paint that I had used on the tree and I also used the vinegar and water and kind of dabbed it off so you can see a little bit of the rust through. I wanted it to look kind of antique -y. So next you'll notice I have a little strand of miniature lights on there and I did pick those up at Michael's. They have a little mini 
tree section. So now it's ready for the resin. The resin I'm using for this project is actually KS resin. It's a one-to-one -one ratio resin that you mix slowly in a cup to help prevent bubbles, scraping the sides, scraping the bottom. It goes from clear to cloudy and back to clear again. I always drizzle the uh, resin over the glass first. If you're trying to figure out how much resin to use on all the resin websites, there should be a resin calculator where you put in the size of your project and it will tell you how much resin to mix up. Just keep in mind that this is intended for on top of a like a painted canvas and it does not take into account that you're putting glass on it so I would mix up just a little bit more I have a tendency to mix up more than I need and I just like a lot of resin I want everything covered really well that's just the way I am you need to make the decision for yourself there are calculators out there that tell you how much resin to mix up so like I said, I do mix it or put it over the um, glass first. I cover the star and then I go up into the corners and around the edges of the canvas. I know I normally tell you do not dump resin over textured glass because the texture will disappear well there is in this instance there is so much glass clumped together and there is so much texture in the entire tree there and the gold is um, making the texture more pronounced um, I am putting quite a bit of resin over it the only thing that I'm not dumping the resin on top of is the trunk because that is laying flat and the texture for that glass will disappear if you dump resin over the top of it for the tree trunk I just put a little resin on my finger and swished it over the top all resin needs a little help you do have to push it up into the corners and around the edges I know it's they say if you have it on a level surface it's self leveling but um, oftentimes you can end up with empty areas if you don't do that and my tables are not level so I end up actually doing the project on the table and after I feel I have everything covered properly I pick it up and I set it on the floor on you know some type of protective uh, cover just so um, that I know that it's level I come back every 15 minutes after my project is done and I look for uh, sediment I retorch it with the kitchen torch to get rid of any bubbles and um, I just make sure nothing has moved because with resin sometimes especially if your table is on level things can slide from one side to the other or just slide off the top of something even if you are level so it's a good idea to come back frequently so again this needs to sit on a level surface at temperatures between 70 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit all resins are different you need to read the directions for the resin that you are using here I ended up turning on a brighter light so I could see better it's also really important to get down eye level with the project because you can look at it from the top and then you can look at it from um, eye level and see things that you didn't see when you're looking at it from the top and you should also turn your project um, and look at it from all angles so it's in your best interest to cover it with a dust cover when you're done hey everyone another christmas tree <laughs> yay so um, i just turned out really pretty this has a ton of little pieces of glass on it and look at the gold on there. I think that is so pretty. So um, normally when I do glass on glass, I like to use translucent glass. And if I can't find it in that color, I'll use the translucent spray paints to color it. But um, the uh, Krylon green is my favorite green. And um, it's just so hard to find. And um, when you do find the cry any of the Krylons, they're price gouging. They're way up to like $40 a can. It's really ridiculous. So um, so anyway, that's why I decided, well, if I'm having a hard time finding it, then you guys are too. So let's try it with an opaque spray paint. And that's how I come up with the idea. And honestly, when I did the gold, I was thinking more of the uh, mercury glass effect. And I didn't realize that... Um, 
the because of the texture in it, it kind of just stuck on the top and didn't really give that effect. You need flat glass for that. But I really love the way it turned out. I hope you guys did too. So um, with the spray, I just want to show you the spray paint. So this is the one I actually ended up using, the Rust-Oleum, which is real pretty. What I normally use is the Krylon stained glass spray paint, the summer green. And um, with the Krylons, you do have to give it many more coats. So I would prefer to use the Tamaya, which is much more concentrated. And um, the only thing is all of the Tamaya, well, the, any of the translucent greens that I have found are not a true green, they're more of a blue green. So this is the uh, Krylon and this is the Tamaya translucent. See the difference? So this is more of a blue green, but I mean, it would still be pretty. I just happen to prefer that one. But the weird thing is, um, so uh, the other day I was on uh, the computer and I went on Ace Hardware for the heck of it and looked up the green and they had it. Well, they didn't have it at the store. It could be shipped to you, $6.99 a can. I said, whoa, $10 shipping, but for three cans to pay $10, I thought, well, that wasn't bad. So after I ordered it, put the order through, I immediately went on Facebook and I said, hey, they have the uh, Krylon, you know, if you wanna buy, you know, a bunch of cans, it's only $10 shipping, $6.99 a can. And then someone messaged me back, it's $9.99. I said, what? So I went back on and they had already increased the price to almost $10, which still isn't bad. So if you can get it shipped to your store to pick it up, then you don't have to pay shipping, which I have done in the past. But um, now, at least to my area, they can't ship it to the store. I had to have it shipped to the house. So if you're interested, that's an idea. Sometimes Michael's will have it also to be shipped to the store so um, or to your house, I don't know. So anyway, that's the, that's the story with the green and why I ended up using the opaque green, but I think it really turned out very pretty. So, um, and the other thing, my uh, Vavor tumbler, that worked out really great. It's a good price point. I think it's only $64 for a three pound tumbler. That's a really good deal. And the other thing that came in that I didn't mention was this ceramic abrasive. And they're like little pellets, abrasive pellets. I thought I might try that with the sea glass next time. So um, anyway, check out their website because um, they have tons of other products there. I had never heard of them before, but um, in my description, I will have a link to the tumbler and also a discount code. So if you're interested at all, go ahead and check it out. And um, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. That really helps the channel. If you enjoy the channel, go ahead and subscribe and you'll be notified when new videos come out. The Facebook page is going. Um, a lot of beautiful art being displayed. A lot of ideas. A great place to ask questions. And I hope you guys all have a great day. Thanks for watching.